Now, VAAI is something kind of relatively common these days. It allows the storage array to kind of pick up some of the heavy lifting involved with creating new virtual machines and zeroing out blocks and doing clones and things like that. The first thing I typically advise doing is go ahead and open up an SSH session to your host if you don't know which primitives are supported by your host. In fact, I'm going to run a command now that you can use on yours called ESXCLI. I will pass along the argument storage core device VAAI status git. So basically we're saying, hey storage system, look at the devices that I'm attached to and gather the VAAI stats or the status of those different devices. What is supported? And in my case, I have four different connections to devices. Three of them are actual ones that I'm using kind of for demo and one I'm booting off of. So you can ignore this guy here, this NAA 600 guy. That's actually my boot LUN. The other ones that begin with T10 FreeBSD are actually a demo storage appliance that I'm connected to over iSCSI. And as you can see, it supports two of the four primitives here. It supports ATS or atomic test and set. It also supports the ability to do zeroing on the array so that we can thick provision and eager zero out a VMDK file, and it'll go ahead and offload the zeroing to the array. Unfortunately, it does not support offloading clones or doing deletes, which is kind of an unmap operation, but that's okay. It's still enough that we can see how to look at the statistics around ATS and zero status. So what we'll want to do now is launch ESX top, just like that. And if I click the U character on my keyboard, it changes me over to the device listing. And this is, again, it's kind of all the devices that I'm attached to, one of which is a Tintree device over NFS. And the other one, again, that NAA 600 number is actually a VNX that I'm booting off of. So what we're really interested in looking at here are these three T10 devices. Those are my iSCSI LUNs. Now, if you want to see ATS and clone and all the other good stuff that's involved with VAAI, we're really going to have to get rid of a lot of this data over here. This is going to become kind of too much clutter. You would need an enormous screen to really see the data. What I'm going to do is press the F key, and I'm just going to get rid of everything that isn't related to VAAI. And you can see a little asterisk next to the different letters. So I'm going to leave the A, and if I press the B key, it gets rid of that ID field, which I don't need, as well as the F, G, and I key. So we've cleared out everything at this point except for the device name. Now what I will go ahead and do is press the O key so that we see the VAAI statistics or the stat. And that's all we're going to see. I'm going to press Enter to return. So now we're looking at things like the amount of clone reads and writes that are going on, the amount of ATS commands that are being sent, and ATS failures that are being sent back and forth from the array, the zeroing that's going on, and the megabytes of zeroing per second, and all that information that's pertinent to VAAI. Now, in order to actually trigger this to do something, you can see I've got a little bit of zeroing activity that's happened in the past. I've been playing around with the, the demo environment. And if I grab the console here, the vSphere client, we're going to go ahead and just make a virtual machine real quick. And I'm going to make it on the production iSCSI LUN, which is this first one at the top here. And you actually be able to watch it issue the ATS commands and zero commands and, and what have you. We'll do a new virtual machine. So we'll do a typical machine. We'll call it clone fun times. So it's just an empty virtual machine at this point. We'll put in the production data center on the first host. Doesn't really matter. And we're going to put on the production LUN here. And Windows is fine. I don't really care. Uh, what we're running here because there's no operating system. I'm going to give it five gigabytes of, of actual data here and I'm going to make sure it's eager zeroed so we can watch those zeros get offloaded. And next and then finish. And you'll be able to watch that first T10 item actually issue more and more zero commands and how many megabytes are being uh, offloaded, megabytes per second of offload that's occurring on the array. And those are commands I'm not having to send. We're letting the array handle that on our behalf. And we can also watch You'll see a little bit of a bump on the ATS in the beginning, and then a, the ATS number will actually increase towards the end as well. But that's all sorts of data that I'm not having to deal with. It's all sorts of commands that I don't have to zero out from the host. We're letting the array handle that. And we're also kind of verifying, yes, this is actually working. We can see the zeroing taking place, and we can verify with confidence that, yes, we see the ATS commands, the atomic set, test and set, and we see the zeroing occurring. So I hope that's been informational for your environment. If you have more primitives you can test with, if you do a clone, you should see the clone information increase. And if you do a SCSI unmap command here, you'll see that the delete numbers increase. Don't miss out on my future videos. Become a YouTube subscriber today. 
Do you crave more content on home labs, technical certifications, deep dives, product reviews, and geeky shenanigans? Wall Network is also available in blog format at wallnetwork.com.